In this video, Bobcats, we're going to take a look at uh, something known as Charles Law. Charles Law relates the um, temperature and volume of a gas. And Charles Law actually has a, a cool connection to the concept of absolute zero. So we'll take a look at that one as well. Charles Law tells us that the volume of a gas and its temperature are directly proportional. So if you increase one, you also increase the other. This is one of my uh, favorite demos also to do. Gas Law demos are fun. Um, this particular recording is somebody else, unfortunately, uh, but he demonstrates very clearly how volume and temperature are directly proportional. If you watch it, you may want to start at uh, two minutes and 15 seconds, although the first two and a quarter minutes are kind of funny because he spends most of that time uh, trying to tie a glove off like a balloon. The equation for Charles' law is given at the top of this slide. But uh, as I mentioned with the uh, Boyle's law, I really prefer to use the combined gas law to do numerical calculations. Um, one thing I would like to point out while we're here on the slide with um, Charles law is that the um, temperature when we're, we're doing any of these gas law calculations must be in Kelvin. It doesn't matter what gas law you're using, we do have to always work in Kelvin. But what I'd rather focus on is this last major bullet point. Um, and since um, volume and temperature are directly proportional to one another, if you double one, the other one gets doubled. If you cut one in half, then the other one is also cut in half. If you look at plots of Charles' law data, there's something kind of interesting that happens for any gas. So for instance, on, on this graph, we have three different gases, helium, neon, and argon. For any gas, if you cool that gas to colder and colder temperatures, the volume shrinks to smaller and smaller volumes until eventually we get down to a volume of zero. So that would be zero on our vertical axis. And something strange happens. No matter what gas it is, um, at zero volume, they're all intersecting at the same point. This point has a temperature of negative 273 degrees Celsius. Since the smallest volume you can have is zero, this seems to imply that there's a lower limit to temperature, that temperature cannot get below negative 273 degrees C. In fact, we now call that lowest possible temperature absolute zero. And that is the zero point on the Kelvin scale. So zero Kelvin or negative 273. To think about that in terms of weather, that would be a temperature of negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit. That's even colder than Alaska. So some really cool things happen down at absolute zero. Um, one of them is that all atomic and molecular motion ceases. So normally, even in the solid phase, particles are moving. They're not moving much. They're vibrating around their equilibrium position. They're rotating. They're doing things like that. Um, but all of that motion just stops when we hit absolute zero. And some really strange effects emerge, um, such as uh, the uh, substances turning into superfluids and Bose-Einstein condensates. You can get more information at, about these things at the two websites that are listed there, but I would really like for you to spend a moment and go and watch this video. It, it's just amazing to see the things that superfluid helium can do. I had actually taught this topic in this class for several semesters, 
before a student came to me and made me realize that we use two really similar vocabulary words. So now I make a, a point of distinguishing these two. These two vocabulary words are super fluid, which is what was talked about in that BBC video that hopefully you went and watched from the last slide. And the other one is super critical fluid, and they're very different phenomena. So a super fluid is a state that's achieved near absolute zero in which fluids don't behave the way we would expect them to behave, such as climbing out of their container um, or leaking through teeny tiny pores that normally they wouldn't leak through. A supercritical fluid is something that's achieved at high temperatures and high pressures. Uh, both the temperature and pressure have to be beyond the critical point on the PT phase diagram. And supercritical fluids are used for things like decaffeinating coffee. This example is uh, trying to use the idea of Charles' Law to figure out the temperature of a sample. And so what we're doing uh, with this one is we've got a sample at 273 Kelvin, that would be zero degrees Celsius, and it has a volume of two and a half liters. And we're asked to find what temperature um, the sample would have if its volume has expanded to seven and a half liters. Well, seven and a half divided by two and a half gives us three. So that means that um, in this transition, the volume has tripled. Well, if the volume has tripled, then that means that the temperature must have tripled. So the new temperature would be three times 273, which is 819 Kelvin. In this video, we used uh, Charles' Law to explain how the volume and temperature of a gas are related to one, one another. They're directly proportional, so if one goes up by a factor of seven, then the other one also goes up by a factor of seven. And we saw how Charles' Law gave us the first experimental indication that there was a lower limit to temperature, which we now call absolute zero. Eat them up, cats.